Hey beautiful, welcome to Her Success Tribe. I'm Rebecca, Rebecca Lockwood, motivational success coach and founder of Her Success Tribe. I'm so, so happy that you found us over here. Today is packed full of inspiration and motivation just for you. So enjoy. <laughs> if you love this, then head over to hersuccesstribe.com to get the latest videos and motivation straight to your inbox. Enjoy. Hi, Rachel. So welcome, Rachel, to the podcast. Woo! Thank you. Thank you for having me. <laughs> so Rachel is the founder of MyRoo. So um, I'll let you, Rachel, take over and explain what MyRoo is and what you do. Yeah, so um, MyRoo Skincare is an organic, natural skincare company. But all our products are formulated with sensitive and allergic skin in mind. So we're free from all known synthetic irritants like parabens, sodium lower, lower sulfate, that sort of thing. We're gluten-free, nut-free, dairy-free. And we offer a fragrance-free version of every single product as well. Um, so my room is really sort of part of my journey. I'm a multiple allergy sufferer myself, so I really understand what my customers are going through um, and love chatting to them about the problems and the challenges that they face living with allergies and sensitive skin. Um, so yeah, that's it in a nutshell. And in a the nutshell, pod- maybe I shouldn't say <laughs> nutshell. <laughs> Non-allergic <laughs> shell. Yeah. And the product is absolutely amazing. I use the product myself, which oh, thank um, you. I absolutely love, really do. Um, and we met on the Entrepreneurial Spark program, didn't we? Did. Which yeah. is um, a business scale a business growth accelerator isn't it that's right Scaling your business and growing your business yeah. yeah so that journey in itself was amazing and the growth that a lot of the businesses went through including yourself was so amazing to stand back and watch uh-huh. and i know that you were someone who really stood out on that program and oh, who, thank you. honestly you really did and i mean you've won so many awards and you know talk to us a little bit about that yeah, that uh, entrepreneurial spots have been, been a really big part of my journey. So I actually started my journey in skincare um, about eight years ago. So um, I had two little girls. I come from a corporate background. I worked in financial services, had a successful career. And then quite a typical story. I think my family came along. My two girls are close in age. And... Um, sort of wanted a bit more I had a long commute I didn't want to be commuting three hours a day as well as working and that sort of thing so I was looking for something else around that time the financial crash happened and so I got the chance to take uh, redundancy so I took redundancy um, and Freya was born with childhood eczema so I started mixing up some things at the kitchen table and uh, making bits and pieces for her and then I realized they were really lovely for my sensitive skin and it, it went from there really so I ran my room as a natural skincare company and a lifestyle business around my young family for four or five years um, and I consulted during that time. I worked with other brands. I worked for a cosmetic pharmacist as well um, and really enjoyed it. But I wanted the products to be what it was about. I didn't want to be a consultant. Um, I wanted to, to get these products into the hands of people who I knew they would benefit. Um, and uh, around that same sort of time, about three years ago, I developed a nut allergy overnight on top of my other, um, other allergies and sensitivities. And that was sort of the light bulb moment for actually, that's what my really could be. That's how I can really make a difference for people by taking these, these products and making them cleaner than clean. Um, you know, nothing in there that might irritate or cause problem skin and issue. Um, and so that was, that was the idea and it was brilliant. And then I didn't know really, but at the time I was suffering from imposter syndrome and um, that wasn't I didn't realize that until much later so what I did with this brilliant idea that I'd had was put it neatly in a little box <laughs> and held the little box and did nothing with it and then gave myself a hard time for not doing anything with the idea and it was this sort of vicious vicious circle really and I think because I'd been out of the workplace working much for myself for a long time I didn't you know have a boss giving me a kick up the backside telling me to get on with it or anything so there this wonderful little idea sat um, and the little voice inside my head said, that's a brilliant idea, but you can't do it. So it stayed in its box. Um, and then I ended up on the Entrepreneurial Spark programme. I'd actually looked at it, uh, looked at the programme and, and again doubted whether it 
I was capable of doing it, whether it was right for me. And I was put forward by a friend to apply and it felt like all the stars aligning or the fates or whatever, whatever you believe in, like it was meant to be. And so I applied for the program and ended up on it. Um, and it was, it was amazing, absolutely transformative. And it was, it was collaborating with people like yourselves, all like yourself, all the other entrepreneurs that were on that program. Um, that really encouraged you and brought you out, out of your shell. Um, and it was a real turning point for me starting that program. A bit of the old me from my old work life started to come through again. A bit of the confidence started to come back. And you're right, I, I, I won some awards, but I had to have the confidence to enter those awards in the first place. Um, and I just decided I was going to start saying yes to things rather than hiding and saying no. We'll just say yes and we'll see what happens and we'll work it out as we go. And it was transformative. Saying yes is a really positive thing. Yeah. And so, yeah, we started entering awards. I won awards for the products. I personally won awards, which was amazing. Um, one of the highlights was at the start of this year, I got a Northern Power Woman shortlisting, which was That's phenomenal. Amazing. Um, and do you know so, what as well, though, Rachel? Um, that, that, it doesn't amaze me that you were shortlisted for it because seeing you know the things that you do and how determined and, and oh. you know how much you do honestly you, you so deserve it thank you that's really nice I uh, I didn't quite believe it <laughs> I was oh, it's amazing what a night that's a lovely one a lovely one to win um and so gradually over time my confidence has has come has come back um you still have your wobbles don't you and you still have a oh, what am I doing and I can't do this and I can't do that um but those sort of external accolades helped reassure me that I wasn't making it up, that I did have something here and I could do it. Um, and we've gone from strength to strength. So we relaunched with the allergy friendly proposition uh, about 18 months ago. Um, so basically the old my Roo disappeared. The only thing that stayed was, was the name, um, which is Roo is my nickname. So it was quite important to me that the name stayed. But we reformulated, we repackaged, we rebranded, we redid the website, I mean everything back back to basics and redid it all. Um and our feet haven't touched the floor since. So within well, you were there, weren't you, when when this all happened? But within six months of launching, we were in John Lewis Leeds. A couple of months after that, we got um our nationwide account with anthropology and our stockist list just keeps keeps growing all the time it's wonderful and we work with some beautiful independent businesses all across the country in fact um from edinburgh right down to south wales we've got stockists everywhere in between um and then we sell through our own website as well which is wonderful and we get to have fantastic conversations with people who come and tell us what they're struggling with and how their, their skin's causing them problems and we can make recommendations and talk to them about our experiences and we get amazing feedback from people telling them uh, telling us what a difference my products have made to them which is just that's what it's all about isn't it obviously we're running a business you know we're not just doing it for fun but hearing that we're making a difference for people is just is amazing amazing yeah that's the kind of yeah I completely get that like when people when you realize the impacts that you have in you know that's really what it comes down to the emotional drivers yes that keep you going when it does get hard <laughs> Absolutely. what's that um i know you quite like your inspirational quotes it's the one about if, um if you follow follow your passion and the money will come is that it yes. yeah yeah if you do um, what you enjoy yeah that's it and i think that's that's so true because if you just love it you've got the energy haven't you and that comes across to people and I mean people keep talking about authenticity as a, a key marketing term at the moment it's a buzzword isn't it very much yeah it thing. is but uh, but calling it a marketing term to me seems slightly odd because you, if you it's try really to be authentic <laughs> you're not are you you can't try to be authentic you either are or you, you're not um, and I think that authenticity comes from doing something that you know inside out that you understand that you're passionate about um, and, and big brands would love a slice of that authenticity pie, but they haven't got it. It's us indie brands and us, you know, small businesses and mums getting businesses off the ground and that sort of thing. They're so passionate about what they're doing because let's face it, it's really hard, isn't it? It's not, it's not an easy gig and people see from the outside in and they think, you know, it looks great and it looks fun and they see the successes and they don't see the sleepless nights and, the worries about paying the bills and all the other bits that go with it um and so you've got to have that passion to keep you going i think through the 
the, yeah. you know, the roller coaster ride. Completely. So I was on your website yesterday. Um, yeah. It was actually something completely unrelated to our interview and for the reason why I ended up on it. I think I was looking at Laura Barlett. Oh, yeah. Of Coco Magazine, and I spotted you on there. So you've got some yeah. amazing features and some amazing PR. Um, and so I just had a, a sneak peek look through. Um, and the thing that struck out to me was that you, you are there. Like, you personally, you're in your videos. You're talking to people about the brand. Yeah. And, you know, that's really amazing to see and definitely authentic. Um, yes. You know, because you talk about you and your, <laughs> your story. So it definitely shines through in everything that you do. Um, so for the people who are listening then, the Entrepreneurial Spark Program, just to clarify, it's a growth accelerator that's run by the NatWest and the Royal Bank of Scotland. Yes. Cover the full UK, main, mostly now, don't they? I think they've got like... Yeah, they do, yeah. Yeah? And, yeah, they do. Yeah, they're in Northern Ireland, Scotland, Wales, and yeah, I think... Yeah. All the way up, all the way up through England, yeah. Yeah, so I always recommend people go check them out. And Me too. <laughs> Um, so coming back to this imposter syndrome then, oh my gosh. So that's also something that held me back for so long in my business. Yeah. yeah. And it's so frustrating. And that's, that is completely the reason why I do what I do and bring this community together for people to realize that it's quite normal. Yes. For that to show up and for that to come up. Um, and then it is possible to push through it and acknowledge that it's not, you know, even Tony Robbins says that it, it, it's the mind. Like the mind is built to think that way. and um, it, it'll come up but it's yes. not necessarily your mind yes um, and and you know you can I always say yes you can like you can do whatever you want I can see but, it behind you on your light box <laughs> <laughs> I should have turned that on shouldn't I <laughs> <laughs> yeah absolutely um, have you read the chimp paradox uh, do you know what I didn't get into it but I have got the book yeah um, it's the uh, and it, I mean, it's in simple terms, it's that little, you know, the devil on your shoulder or the, that little nagging voice. The book goes into sort of the biology of it, which I found quite interesting. But it is just that little nagging voice. You can't do, you can't do that. And actually, it's almost a safety mechanism, isn't it? Because there is risk. There is risk to putting yourself out there. But actually, you've just got to look at what the risk is. And the risk is, it doesn't quite work out and you learn from that and you move on and you know you know how to do better next time so you've just got to look at the, the size of the risk for putting yourself out there um and recognize that it, it's worth taking a few scary scary steps because the potential rewards are, are huge um and yeah not let that little nagging voice get the better of you really i think I, I, I think it's widely recognised that women do suffer from it more than more than men. I know mm. men do do as well, but I think a lot of women suffer from it, um, especially a lot of women I meet who've taken time out of the workplace to have their families. And I think that change that changes you. Of course, it's going to change you. Know, you and, and your sense of identity and who you are, I think, sh shifts um, when you're at home with children. Um, and that's not, it's not better or worse, it's just different. Yeah. And it's its getting used to that new, different you. Um, but I look back on my journey and I wouldn't be where, you know, all the things that have happened and changed me as I go along have all led to, to where I am now. So things ha things do happen for a reason. Um, and there, that yes, you can, and that, that starting to say yes, is just a really good place to start. Um, you know, next time someone asks you, to do something you think I can't do that just say yes and then work out how to do it afterwards yeah what did you did Steve Jobs say was it Steve Jobs or the guy from Amazon someone said that didn't they and it's quite rec well recognized that yeah just that um, say amazing yes thing happen. Figure it out. that's right yeah and amazing things happen outside your comfort zone which yeah. is so 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 true and actually I mean you you witnessed a lot of my pitching journey part of the entrepreneurial spark thing is teaching you to get comfortable with pitching and we pitch all the time don't we 60 second pitching all the time when you're on the program um, and it's funny because when I was in corporate land I would quite happily stand up and present to a room full of people it didn't really cause me uh, you know get a bit of butterflies but not to the level that this did and part of that was the, pa the, the passion that I have for this that, that made me want to get it right uh, but for some reason the nerves kicked in but you know you practice and you practice and you say yes 
and now I'm doing things like this, you know, sat chatting to you, and uh, you know, I've, I've gone around speaking to various different um, groups and talking about my journey. Do you know, I, I love it, <laughs> absolutely love it. And if you'd have told me two years ago that I'd actually be choosing to do these sorts of things, I wouldn't really have believed you. But it was just those little, those little steps. And every little step takes you a bit further along your journey and suddenly you've gone a mile, haven't you? Mm. Um, yeah. yeah. It's so amazing. It's amazing to see you doing so well as well. Um, so let's talk about awards then. So I, um, I know from experience, people see that I've won a few different awards and they always yeah. come to me and ask me, how do you do that? How, you know, so do you want to tell us how, what advice you'd give to someone who is wanting to put themselves in fact, one of the things I think people don't realise is that they put themselves forward for the award. Yes, yes, I think people were waiting to be nominated. So actually someone asked on a uh, Facebook group I'm on, I don't think it was yours, I think it was a different one, but uh, was asking for advice about awards and, um, and I, yeah, I mean, we have, we've won quite a few. Um, and yeah, they were flabbergasted about nominating yourself. They couldn't get their head around that. But actually that is how the vast majority of, of awards work. Um, it is that classic you've got to be in it to win it yeah. um, you know if you, if you don't enter any awards you're not going to win any awards no one comes knocking on your door announcing you, you've won an award um, they do occasionally but generally <laughs> you have to enter um, and do you know what actually that we were just talking about the 62nd pitch that for me is a really important part of entering awards because that skill to be able to succinctly tell someone about your business is what's required to fill in an application form for an award. So if you can't tell someone in 60 seconds what it is your business does, how, where, you know, how you've grown to where you are, how big your team is, what your traction is, in 60 seconds, then when you come to fill in an awards form, you're just gonna waffle. So actually taking the time to get to the, the core of what it is you do, so you would say that if you, you might think that if you've got a physical product, that it's easier than if you've got a service-based business. But actually, you know, I, I could waffle on for hours about, well, we make skincare and it, it's natural and we don't use these ingredients. And, uh, you know, you could talk for hours without actually getting to the core of, of what it is you do. So knowing the essence of your business, I think, is crucial if you're going to enter awards. Um, because that's what they're looking for. They're looking for something that stands out. Um, so that, that you know what's your us your what's your usp what makes you different from any other person who might be entering this award because there'll be lots of other people in your space if you're entering a specific type of award so we've won skincare awards for our products obviously lots of other skincare brands are entering those competitions so why else why should they pick us what makes our products different from anybody else so for us it's the fact that we're formulated for sensitive and allergic skin for somebody else um I mean, we're actually vegan and cruelty free too, but that's just part of our brand. That's not the core of our brand. So you might have another brand that focuses on that as the core of their brand. Um, so I think it's really important that you, you understand that before you even start to think about entering awards. Um, and shop around. There's loads out there. So make sure you pick the ones that are right for your business. They're going to give you the best PR. They don't have to cost a fortune. Some of them charge, some of them don't. Um, so um, I, we won Micro Business of the Year um, at the Great British Entrepreneur Awards at the end of last year. And that was a big gala dinner with Nat West there. And um, that was a really fun night. Um, and that was completely free to enter. I was sat out in the garden at my picnic table last summer, uh, summer before last, filling in the entry form. And then at Christmas there, I was at the, the Black Tie Do. Um, so yeah, look around. There's plenty that are free. So if you haven't got budget, um, find the ones that are free to start with and then make sure you leverage the PR off the back if you do win, um, mm. you know, and get the, get the coverage from it. Yeah. Wow. Some amazing tips. <laughs> <laughs> Writing some notes. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we've kind of spoke about the challenges that you face and with like imposter syndrome and yeah. kind of keeping small for so long. Is there any other things that stick out to you as like big challenges that you've felt like you've overcome during your entrepreneurial journey? So we talked a bit before we started filming about that, that leap, that um, taking that jump to start. So obviously I did that way back when my family were little, 
but then um, actually what you realize once you make that first jump is being an entrepreneur is just a series of jumps actually oh. so you make that first <laughs> big jump and then the hurdles come along the way um, so scale the scaling which is, is the, the phase that we're in at the minute brings its challenges um, so actually we've always made the products in-house and we're, we're moving manufacture out we're working with a fantastic um, manufacturing company in Leeds who are brilliant totally understand what we're all about and supporting us um, and we're, we're ready for that step in the journey now um, but there is some emotion around the fact that I've made these products since I started at the kitchen table and now we've got our own little facility and we're going to be moving out of there and, and handing it all over um, so there's some practical practical and financial hurdles with that and some emotional ones as well it's just another step along the journey as the brand grows so a lot of positive emotion because it's exciting but a bit of reflectiveness as well as we look back on where we've come from um, and then uh, the other big challenge with scale is always always finances always finances so um, we were delighted because we've just passed 18 months and quite a lot that's a a uh, big flashpoint for a lot of businesses. I think something like eighty-five percent of businesses don't get past eighteen months. It is, um, isn't it? it is, and I and I I get why. Yeah, um, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what the statistics are. And I know that finances come into it for a lot of people. Cash flow, yeah, yeah, absolutely. But I bet the this is just too hard thing is a big part as well. Um, you know, actually, I could just go and get a job, and someone would pay me. And the stress would go away and I, I can see that um, but our little mantra is just keep going just keep going you know because actually the bad times pass and then you have a good patch and just keep keep going you get through the bad patch um, so f um, in terms of the financials we've we're at another milestone for us so we're just closing a round of, of um, finance so we've taken some debt and some equity um, so that's really exciting. That's going to allow us to grow to the next stage. Um, we're doing a little brand refresh. We've got some new products coming, lots of exciting stuff happening. Um, but securing finance is not without its stress either. So that's, those have been our sort of our scale challenges. Um, but the, you know, it's two sides. I'm using hundreds of cliches. I'm really, <laughs> I'm using every cliche yeah. I go, but go two, ahead sides, a bit. <laughs> two sides of the same coin, isn't it? It's that, you know, gosh, right, we've got all this money now brilliant we can do loads with it but gosh we've got you know we've got to have an eye on repaying that money and making sure the investors are happy and that sort of thing so um yeah but it's an, an exciting new chapter so i bet that the in kind of taking um, an investment on board has its challenges in itself and and not only that but giving away part of your business part of your yeah birthday. yeah i mean that must have I, i've not I've not had my business you know my business isn't in a position where it needs investment yes where that our model is um, and I think that I'm quite lucky for that um, because I don't think I think I'd find it really difficult <laughs> it, it, yeah it's interesting it, it, we've, we've seen it as as a real positive because it is allowing us to do this next stage which we just couldn't do without it um, so no we're, we're, we're really excited about it the, the big challenge has, has been all the the sort of the legal aspects of it because it's another when I mean, you become an expert in everything don't you when you run your own business yeah. suddenly you know we're proofreading shareholder agreements and um you know we're, we're a limited company already but we've got to go in and do change our articles of association and all these sort of things that you've never done and yet again we're doing a load of things for the first time ever um so it's great you learn as you go and we um we're just a core team of two in the business, but we've got a great team of people who support us. Um, so we've got an FD who works with us on a freelance basis, and he's been a great support. Um, and um, we're still in contact with some people from East Sparks. They've been offering us some legal support as well. So um, lots and lots of support out there, and it's just yeah going through that next that next phase really. That's amazing because I remember when you set up your um the what do you call it your studio space yes to be able to still continue doing it yourself because I know it was about twelve months ago wasn't it when you was in the predicament at that stage of do we outsource it do we keep it yes. in house yes I know you invested a lot then in creating your own space to be able to keep it in house yeah yeah we um we did we looked at premises and we were sort of contemplating building our own factory effect effectively um but the money that would have been required to do that was vast sums of money um 
and would have, if it would have sucked up any investment that we took and wouldn't we would have had a lovely unit then but no money for increased marketing or branding or anything like that which is actually what what we need to do um and i think you have to recognize as a small business owner where your areas of expertise are and our strengths as, as sales marketing online that sort of thing we're not you know we're not expert manufacturers um and these people are that's what that's that that's all they do that's their business so they know this far better than we do um and they have capabilities that we don't so you know we're going to be able to offer different sorts of packaging and different travel you know travel sizes and all that sort of thing that we couldn't we couldn't do um so yeah i think recognizing when to bring in the experts is a real skill as a as an entrepreneur yeah yeah definitely and it does a temptation isn't it just to you know you want to put your eyes <laughs> it's like not let anybody in yeah i know when um, so my husband joined me in the business just over a year ago and he hadn't been working with me very long and he said you are going to have to give me something <laughs> and i was sort of oh no i want to i'd like to keep that i still want to do that still do one and we work really well together now it was a just a step along the journey but it had always just been me so i'd never had anybody to hand stuff off to um mm. but you're not gonna you're not gonna grow unless you get help <laughs> yeah definitely outsource is definitely one of my like um what's the word it's definitely not a strong point it's, yeah yeah it's really difficult i find um so yeah so give us some tips then because i know i keep saying to my husband oh can you help me with something and he's like yeah yeah but then i never actually give him anything to help me with um so what can <laughs> oh gosh it's hard it's hard. well I, I mean phil phil and i have really complementary skills so, so he always jokes if anyone says to him what do you do in the business he always says whatever rachel doesn't want to do <laughs> So we're lucky that we've got completely complementary skill sets. So actually, we're both from a marketing background. Um, but Phil, um, Phil's really numerate. He's really good with numbers. He's very logical. So actually, we're in the middle of um, applying for some grant funding, and Phil's filled in the however many page application form for that. Um, when we went for our debts for our loan, Phil, there was 26 page, up, page application form for that. Phil did that. And I would have just procrastinated till the cows come, came home and not, yeah. not done that. Um, so we so we work really well together. So now we've got quite clear, clearly defined roles, really. So effectively, I'm front of house and Phil's back of house. So I suppose it's trying to identify where your weak spots are and if there's somebody you've got in your life who has those strengths and then being confident enough in you to let it go and in them that they will do their best for you the pros of it being your husband is it's it, it, no one will care as much as they will um you know friend friends will help and that sort of thing but you know when you when you're bringing up a family and you know you've got a mortgage together and that sort of thing it's in both your interests for it to succeed and so if you have got a willing husband then make the most of it <laughs> well, coming down back to the um so you so you now sell through john lewis and through retailers throughout the country so just talk us through like some advice that you give to someone who because I, I have a lot of people in the network who come to me and say they want to see themselves in you know big retailers and one of the things that they say to me before they tell me that is they say oh you're going to think it's going to sound stupid and I say of course not and I always think of you Rachel I always say, <laughs> you know you know I think well I've seen it being done I've seen it you know and um, it's definitely not you know stupid and they'll say I want to see it on the um shelves that someone like boots or yeah. um, debenhams yeah and be like, why, why is that stupid of course it's not stupid you know yeah. that's the plan for you and what you're doing so what advice would you give someone who who wants to kind of build a relationship with a large supplier like that I, I, do you know we should do a live q a on your group yeah and, and people can ask me whatever they want so um I'm, I'm not an expert it's just you know what my experience is but i've pitched i've pitched to most of the big retailers um, pitched to boots pitched to house of fraser um um anthropology trying to think who else um lots of them so i've dealt with lots of different buyers along the way we're still in conversation with quite a few quite a few retailers at the moment um 
they all work slightly differently. Again, I would go back to what we were talking about when um, we were talking about applying for awards. You have, you have to know what makes you different. Um, they will also want to see um, that you are doing all you can to get the brand out there. So if the, you know, the first thing they will do is either jump on your social media or Google you. Do you need to be making sure if they Google you, you come up? Because actually I, I've, I've helped a few brands along, along the way, you know, asked for a bit of help. And before, you know, before we have our chat, I've Googled them and their website isn't even appearing, let alone any, you know, anything else. Um, so you need to be doing all that, trying to get PR, trying to get coverage, getting on, on other blogs, um, making sure that you're posting on your social media really regularly. Because that's absolutely the first thing they're going to look at. And if you are invisible, they're not going to want you because they need a brand that people are going to come and buy. Um, and then again, knowing what makes you different because they get, you know, they well, you don't even always get as far as pitching, but they get millions of emails from people wanting to be on their shelves. Mm. And you have got to stand out and it does i don't from my experience it doesn't need to be gimmicky it's not about sending a big bunch of helium balloons to the buyer or any, you know anything quirky or whatever yeah. it's just knowing your brand inside out um, and you absolutely have to know it inside out because they will ask you about what your margins are how many units you can produce a week all of those sorts of questions so knowing everything about your business which you will do because it's your business but just making sure you have it you know ready at hand um and and selling telling them why they can't live without your product basically there's no there's no magic or mystery to it really um it is a bit of a numbers game um you know so in order to get one or two retailers you need to be speaking to a lot of them mm. um, and it does have moment a bit of momentum so once you start to get one or two smaller stockists then other stockists are more likely to stock you because they know you're already managing other accounts successfully and it, it, it builds um but yeah I'd, ha I'd be really happy if you fancy doing a, a live q a or something to, yes. like I, I say i'm not an expert but i can just <laughs> give my experiences and what I've learned, learned along the way as well. Yeah, I think that would be so about valuable for the community. I think they'd love it and it's amazing. Thank you. I know um, we've got an amazing masterclass from Rebecca Miller in our membership site um, and yeah. that talks about how to get PR. Um, right, yes. And yeah, that's definitely a good one. So, um, so what's, what's next for you then? Where do you see yourself going in the next 12 months? Oh, so ne the next 12 months are going to be amazing. It's so it's exciting. I know yeah. that you planned out for the next five years. I know that. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah, so we're, I mentioned we're in the middle of a brand refresh. So um, I, it, the, uh, the name's still staying, but the packaging's changing quite a bit. So a much more colourful, bolder look um, to give it a bit more shelf standout yeah. in retailers, a bit more colourful. Um, I, I love colour myself, and so the packaging never quite spoke to me um, where this new branding really does and we've worked with the fab um, design collective in Leeds who are also part of the entrepreneurial spark program so that's really nice feels like another little full circle um, and they've been brilliant to work with um, so we'll be launching that across our social media over the next few weeks and then in the new year the products will start to have the new look and feel as well and then we've got new products coming on board um, early in the new year um, which is fantastic because we haven't launched any new products since we launched 18 months ago. We've got a program of products coming out over the next 12 months. Um, so lots of exciting stuff happening there. Then obviously the outsourcing will happen um, and we'll continue to grow. So we're in talks with lots of retailers um, and we're starting to explore export. So we've got, um, we've got a retailer in Spain and we're selling Hong Kong as well. Mm. Um, but we're talking with some stockists in other territories as well at the moment. And um, so lots of exciting things happening with that as well. So, uh, yeah, yes, we shan't be, shan't be quiet. <laughs> no, that's, it's so exciting. So you mentioned then that you've got um, a giveaway going on with some amazing yes. prizes. So let's tell our listeners where they can find that. Yeah, so if you head to our blog, um, so it's on the MyRu website and you just click on the blog link and we have got the most amazing one-off advent calendar. So we've collaborated with loads of indie beauty businesses um, to create 24 unique 
gifts. Um, so the competition runs now. I can't quite remember, but I can tell you afterwards and you can pop it on your page, maybe Rebecca. Um, but it's 20 something of November um, and then we'll draw the competition and um, one winner will get this whole big box of goodies all gift wrapped for them to open one a day through December. Um, and it's just quite it's a uh, it's quite simple to enter it's just sort of tweet and follow on Facebook um, and then as well as that we're running a 25% discount on all our products at the moment um, we're clearing out all the old branded stock and bringing in the news so we thought while it was Christmas we'd offer a bit of a discount so if you use the uh, discount code advent 25 then you'll get 25% off everything on the site plus That's our nice. standard free postage and packaging as well so what's your url then for your website it's myroo.co.uk okay, m-y-r-o-o yeah m-y-r-o-o.co.uk yeah. yeah so i'm gonna go ahead and run straight over there and then <laughs> <laughs> so excited and you know the products are amazing I thank you myself, like i said um and have yeah and i actually love the packaging as it is do you know as soon as we announced we were rebranding everyone was like why and then you go oh, no, no. but no the, the new stuff is lovely it's so exciting a bit more contemporary um and as i say yeah it gives it a bit more stand out on the shelf in the shops so, Aww, um, yeah. super well thank you so much for no i've enjoyed it doing this interview if there's one thing that you want to give people to go away with what would that be oh take one small step every day yeah <laughs> thank you so much Rachel no no problem I've enjoyed it thanks Rebecca thanks for joining us beautiful remember that you've got this and if you need any support from a tribe of awesome women head over to hersuccesstribe.com and join the community make that choice that your time is now you can achieve anything you set your sights on yes you can I will see you on the other side.